player pushing in from Catwalk, and Vanity gets four! <laughs> Vanity the 4K to seal the deal and make Chaos your Mountain Dew League champion. As far as I'm aware, it was completely like the investors. Some people looked at numbers, saw they were bad, and then, yeah, there goes our jobs, I guess. This is just a dark horse that you could take a punt on. Don't, don't yep. expect it to go far. It's only got three legs. Just, just give it a push out the gate and see where it goes. Swing it through. Zone's going to trade out finally. He's, he's, he's detained. detained. He's going to stand as watch as V1 against all the odds, against all the doubt. Rise above and bring the first win for North America above Europe. These days, Vanity is one of the biggest names in North American Valorant. But just a few months ago, he was struggling in the mires of a dying scene. NA just died in, in CS hard. I mean, you have, what do you have? You have EG, you have Liquid, and then the rest is just like EU, you know? Between the pandemic, sponsors pulling out, and players switching to Valorant, many NA orgs didn't make it through the online era of CSGO. And among those orgs, one name in particular stands out. Vanity's former team, Chaos Esports Club. They're stacked up here on bodies. There's a player pushing in from Catwalk, and Vanity gets four! <laughs> Vanity the 4K to take his 31st kill to seal the deal and make Chaos your Mountain Dew League champions. Chaos was one of NA's hottest teams in 2020. The Mac 10s coming through, and this could be it. Two left alive, a defuse on the cards, but they're not on the bomb just yet. The headshot is landed by Zephyr, and Chaos get it done. Time ticking away from Triumph. Shake with the first, but they lose him immediately after. Junior, it's all on him. He needs to stick the bomb, and there's just not enough time. Chaos, oh, wow. I've locked it in. But just as things were looking up, the entire org folded, leaving the CSGO roster to fend for themselves. Me and Zeppa had an offer from Gen G before they got out of Counter-Strike, which was, I mean, kind of unlucky, I guess, but it is whatever. It's esports. Nothing makes sense at all. I don't even think the players knew they were getting dropped until they got dropped. But as heartbreaking as the situation looked, Vanity, the team's rowdy IGL and cat ear wearing fan favorite, was actually looking forward to a change of pace. I've been playing the same game since 2015. Literally nothing has changed. Maybe like the SG and the AUG came in and out of meta for, for like roughly like six months a piece. And like so many players before him, Vanity turned his eyes to Valorant. Pipes. Okay. Oh. But switching games wasn't gonna be as easy as it seemed. See, even though he made the decision to switch games while Chaos's days were already numbered, Vanity couldn't just leave. No matter how badly NA was doing or how uninspired he felt by CSGO in general, the game was a monolith, while Valorant was a gamble. Plus, he had to wait until the org actually folded. I mean, we knew back in like October, I think we were getting released. And honestly, I kind of like expected it like throughout the year because we were getting like delayed payments and stuff. We never had sponsors. So it was kind of just like uh, investor money and stuff. And that's never going to last like super long, right? When Chaos finally collapsed in January, it was time for Vanity and his teammates to get the hell out of NACS while they still could. I was probably going to end up switching to Valorant regardless of the end of my contract. Uh, it was like, Set probably 70, 30 switching to Valorant. I was getting kind of bored of Counter-Strike and I saw like the, just the path that was going down. It's like not something that reliably, like I could, or I could rely on. But by the time Vanity was ready to enter Valorant, the Cloud Nines and FaZe Clans of the world already had fully formed squads. And so he had to take whatever he could get, accepting a role as IGL with version one, a brand new American org. I was chatting with Jake around the release of Valorant or sometime like a few months into it and talking about how I was considering transitioning from Counter-Strike into Valorant and wondering if they were looking to get into it and he said they were. We were interested in Valorant because we understood where the developer was coming from and the approach they were taking when building this game. V1's Valorant squad was a group of ragtag misfits, a bunch of former CSGO pros who had never really amounted to anything. This wasn't exactly a winning recipe. Early Valorant was full of teams just like this one, and it never worked out. No one expected much from V1, and at first, the doubters were right. Because they're down to the last two, and a nice Sage Wall gets mowed down quite a bit, down to the last little bit more down to find the ace on the way out, and TSM burst across the finish line. But practice makes perfect. And by the time NA Stage 2 Challengers 1 qualifier came around, V1 were in a much better place, ready to take on tough opponents and actually win some games. Knife's edge now, V1. They need this to close things out. Vanity finds another. 
It's all up to Zachary. He's been huge so far. But it's Penny. Gets the classic out. Zachary, see you later. And V1. They've got time for the defuse. They win in OT on map three. They finally toppled phase. And we've got ourselves an upset. V1 upset FaZe Clan to make it into Challengers, where they went on a pretty deep lower bracket run. Now the ice is faded, Bjorn goes for no. a swing, that's a massive kill, it's now down to a 1v1, oh. but it's Vanity who comes out on top. Version 1, take the series 2-1. to one. Paint shells available as well, so a whole lot of chaos to be created, but there it is, it's off the board, Vanity! with a huge kill and Penny to follow up both from heaven. Now taken down, they funnel in from the back of the side into the cloud burst. They will go poised, trying to buy some space, buy some time. It's the blades in the hands. It's all up to one, but that's going to be it. Version one, battle back eight to four and take the series two to one. Built by gamers in Cloud9 Blue may not have been the most notable opponents, but those wins secured V1 a spot at the stage two challenger finals. And there, they shocked everyone. And that's something that is going to be once again quickly responded to by Cloud9 by pressuring for C, but this time Vanity's more than ready for spamming the Judge. The classic comes through as well. And that's a lovely result for Vanity, that's to be sure. And there's the first contact, and that's the position we're talking about. The Vanity setup. Oh, we've actually owned them so heavily. There's nothing that they can do. Now they have a main control. This is a really great place to do the post plant from to retake this. They, I mean, they're wrapping around, but the wall from Effies could buy them just enough time. They're only able to push him from that one side. Vanity pushes right back. Poise trading it out. Poise with the blade storm. Looking for one. Why is ah! he just ah! He's good for it. No! Ladies and gentlemen, version one, do it. V1 tore through the lower bracket, beating just about every team in NA other than Sentinels to earn a spot at Valorant's first international tournament, where Vanity was confident they'd rise to the challenge. Like, there's a yeah. chance that. Like we just go and ever like both us and Sun will just go 0 and 5 or whatever, like whatever the group is. I don't think it'll happen. I think NA is one of the more just sim simply from a talent point of view, I don't see that happening. But unfortunately for Vanity, V1 were at a disadvantage from the start. Hey guys, unfortunately I'm here today to talk about Whippy and we're not going to be using him for masters due to COVID complications. It was hard for him to get an appointment to obtain the visa needed. Once again, no one expected V1 to do well. This is just this is just a dark horse that you could take a punt on. Don't don't yep. expect it to go far. It's only got three legs. Just just give it a push out the gate and see where it goes. That's <laughs> that's my feel on version one right now. And I don't mean that to be disrespectful to the team. I mean that to try and set reasonable expectations so people don't shit on them if they fail. The team was written off as a regional one hit wonder. But despite what anyone thought of their chances, V1 came to win. 12 seconds. Oh, right. gonna walk through this. Penny! Oh, that is what? full NA work right there. All flash and the round probably to follow. Any HP on He's this right, one, they're not him. finding the first. Penny waits! He gets one! He moves to the other side and now scream task to try and no do way. it! He's gone! Delsis, the timing is everything. He gets one. He sees Yampi and the nerves no are starting to show no for Delsis! So calm, so collected. Nobody actually from Liquid falling back here, so they might even just get detained. Link goes forward, Penny gonna trade one out. Link swinging through, he's gonna Cryptics. trade out finally. He's, he's, he's detained. detained. He's gonna stand as watch as V1 against all the odds, against all the doubt, rise above and bring the first win for North America above Europe. V1's win against Team Liquid, against the likes of Scream himself, was an enormous milestone for Vanity and his team. Vanity spent years playing a game where his talent never got to flourish, playing in a scene that quite literally crumbled around him. Now, he was representing NA on the international stage, beating some of the best foreign players in the world. But of course, every other team in Reykjavik was just as determined to take home the trophy. And despite their best efforts, V1 couldn't overcome some of their tougher opponents. But allow, as you said, is on the flank. Ooh. Ooh. Cause a problem. No penny highlights this time around is my goodness. It very well may be happening. Celsius drops one, but what else can he do? No, ladies and gentlemen, bow down to your Korean overlords as they take down North America and they advance. Fanatic, they'll do magic to run the clock down. Oh, Magnum, Magnum, the second. 
They've only done it for Natic! Sending version 1 home, living through the lower bracket! V1 only lost to Fnatic and New Turn, who placed second and third respectively. So despite placing fifth, V1 only lost to the best of the best. And while losing obviously didn't feel great, the NA squad showed the rest of the world that they belonged among Valorant's A-listers. We came in with a stand-in, people thought we were going to get dead last. I mean, we beat one of the best, I mean, we beat two of the strongest teams in the world. Obviously, they made it here, so they have to be some of the best teams in the world. We played the other teams that we lost to very, very close, and there's not much to be disappointed with, considering we came here with less than a week of practice with our new fifth, and he's uh, never competed at a level like this before. As a player who once faced a difficult choice between CSGO and Valorant, Vanity could finally be at peace with his decision. In just a few short months, he and his team went from NA's Dark Horses to one of Valorant's Elite. And they're just getting started. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.